If you're interested in learning more about implementing OSPF over IPsec, grab a seat in our Advanced Juno Security course. For full details, just visit www.juniper.net slash courses. And take good notes while you're in class, as this subject appears on the Juniper Network Certified Professional Security Exam. Now let's get to your learning bite. Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the OSPF over IPsec learning bite. So at this point, you might be asking yourself, why use OSPF over IPsec? Well, there's two major reasons. The first being that we can secure OSPF communications between devices. The second being that we can secure traffic between end hosts. And how this happens is that OSPF directs that end host traffic through the IPsec tunnel dynamically. There are a few possible issues you need to look out for. With IPsec, look out for mismatched policies and proposals, pre-shared keys, and then look out for IKE not being permitted in the security zone that has the external IKE pairing interface in it. Then with security policies, you may have the ST0 interface in a separate zone. This is fairly common, especially with hub and spoke VPNs. If this is the case, you're going to need to make sure that you have policies that permit traffic through that zone. Then intrazone policies. If you have an instance such as a hub and spoke VPN where you have the loopback interface as the IKE pairing interface, you may need intrazone policies to permit some IKE traffic and don't get too hung up on that right now. We'll show that in the demo here in a minute. Then look out for IPsec related issues. Be aware of different OSPF parameters that must match such as OSPF hello timers, area numbers, you know, you can run into MTU issues, etc. Watch out for router ID issues. If we have duplicate router IDs, you're going to have problems with sharing routes. You're going to have problems with adjacencies. Then be aware of the OSPF interface type configuration. This is important, especially with a hub and spoke VPN, which requires a point to multi point OSPF interface type. Here's our example that we'll be using in the demo. And with this example, the overall goal is we want to ensure that the different host device that's host 0, host 1, host 2, and host 3 can communicate with each other and we are going to facilitate that communication through OSPF over IPsec. Now as you might suspect there's a few problems we're going to have to work through. The hub and spoke VPN is working between SRX1, remote 2, and remote 3. However it is not working between SRX1 and remote 1 and in this scenario SRX1 is the hub device and remote 1 and remote 2 and remote 3 are the spoke devices. Another caveat that I want to point out here or another problem is that we don't have any administrative control over remote 1 in this scenario. There's actually quite a few parameters that we don't even know about remote 1. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to troubleshoot and figure out those parameters from SRX1's perspective. And then there's a few other things I want to point out. On the slide here you'll see that SRX1 is using the loopback interface for IKE pairing. The IKE pairing addresses for R2 and R3 are specified but we don't know that for R1. And then the router IDs for everything but R1 are present as well. So here's SRX1, Remote 2, Remote 3, and the host device. Notice that Remote 1 is not present there and that's because in this scenario, we don't have administrative control over Remote 1. So with the host device, I want to make special mention of this. This is a Junos device that is split up into multiple virtual routers. For example, Host 0 is a routing instance on the host device that is logically connected to SRX1. So now I'll show you connectivity or the lack thereof from host to host device. So here I'm pinging host1 from host0. I have static host names configured so I don't have to type out the IP addresses to ping a host. And of course that is not working. Host2, same thing. And the same thing with host3. And that's okay because we need to configure a few things first before we can get that communication happening. All right, so here's SRX1. First let's look at the phase one tunnels. Security associations are there for remote2 and remote3. 
Same thing goes for the Phase 2 Security Associations. So let's look at the Security Zone and Security Policies. There's a few things I do want to point out here. First of all, the Internet Zone has the GIGI001 interface, which is the interface that points towards the Internet Cloud. That zone also has the Loopback interface. Next, I want to point out that the ST0 interface is contained within the VPN zone. In here we have security policies that permits from the VPN zone to the trust zone and from the trust zone to the VPN zone. And since we have our IPsec tunnels set up between Remote 2 and Remote 3, let's configure OSPF for them. In this setup we are using Area 0 and that goes for Remote 1, 2, and 3 as well. When configuring ST0, keep in mind this is a hub and spoke VPN, so we do have to set the interface type to a point to multipoint type. Then we need to set the interface that connects to host 0 as a passive interface in OSPF. So I'll pause the video for just a minute and then we'll check those adjacencies. Okay, it's been about a minute and there's no neighbors. So earlier we checked and made sure that the ST0 interface is in the VPN zone. So let's check that ST0 interface to make sure OSPF is permitted on it. And this output shows us that only SSH is permitted for inbound traffic. We need to change that. And I'll pause the video for a minute to allow those OSPF adjacencies to form. Okay, so it's been about a minute. Let's check those OSPF adjacencies. And we have those. We have it from Remote 2 and Remote 3. So let's examine the OSPF routes now. And we have routes from the host network of Remote 2 and Remote 3. That's awesome. That's what we want to see. Well, let's jump back over to the host device and try to ping host 3 from host 0. Hey, we have communication now. That's excellent. And host 2, we have communication as well. That's what we want to see. Not with host 1 yet, though, because we haven't set that up yet. So we need to now set up the VPN with Remote 1. So let's jump to the IKE security hierarchy but before we do that before we can configure it let's try to find out what the remote IKE pairing address is going to be for remote 1 so let's examine that physical external interface on SRX1 and nothing yet I'm going to pause the video for a minute to see if we can get anything stop alright it's been over a minute and nothing has shown up and this has to do with security policies in the security policies hierarchy, we only have policies that permit from the trust to VPN and from the VPN to trust zone. What's happening here is Remote 1 is initiating an IKE session with a loopback address of SRX1. And if we look at the zones, we see that the loopback interface is in the same zone as the GIGI001 interface. So what happens is that IKE traffic reaches the GIGI001 interface, and then the GIGI001 interface attempts to pass it to the loopback interface. Well, that action requires an intra-zone policy. So let's configure that. Now let's monitor that GIGI001 interface again. Alright, so we have something here now. And look at that address. That address is more than likely the address that we need to find for that IKE uh, pairing address. We need to use that address. I'm going to copy an existing gateway to save some time. And then we're going to configure the IPsec parameters.
and we have an additional phase one security association and that is with remote one phase two as well we have everything's looking great here let's look at our OSPF neighbors and we have an OSPF neighborship for all three spoke devices that's awesome let's look at the routes now and this doesn't look so well we have we're, we're missing a route we're missing the route for remote three we have remote one and two check this again and if you look at the age here the 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 route for remote one is not very old and keeps it's like it's flapping that age just keeps resetting itself and look at that we just got a route for remote uh, three and now it's gone and the remote one local route is back we have some route flapping going on this is a problem let's look at the OSPF database maybe we can find something there and we have LSAs for two three and four that seems a little odd so we know that there seems to be a route flapping problem between uh, remote one and remote three so let's look at remote three's LSA and go from there now let's look at that a couple more times since we're having flapping with the routes and look at that uh, they just switched over so we're having those LSA's flap you know they're getting replaced so that tells me we have a duplicate router ID issue on our hands and if we look at the OSPF neighbors now look at these IDs that's associated with remote 1 and remote 3 they both have the same router ID that's our problem we can't fix the problem by adjusting remote 1 we don't have access to remote 1 but we can fix it by adjusting remote 3 just use an unused number for the router ID commit that configuration and go back to SRX1 and now things are different we have differing router IDs and now we have routes that seem to be sticking around you can see the age is incrementing beforehand it never made it past 10 that's a good sign things appear to be working here we look at the OSPF database we now have an entry for 1.1.1.1 as well as 3.3.3.3 so let's jump back to the host device now and try to ping host 1 from host 0 and we have success now let's try to ping host 0 from host 1 bidirectional communication host 2 same thing and three things are working great this is just what we want we have now solved the problem we had in our case study one last thing I do want to show you is the traffic actually going through the IPsec tunnel or the statistics that show that and we can see we have packets entering the tunnel and exiting or being encrypted and decrypted and that's what we want to see this shows us that traffic is actually going through that IPsec tunnel as directed by OSPF so that brings us to the end of this learning bite we discussed OSPF over IPsec and then we demonstrated an OSPF over IPsec scenario so as always thanks for watching Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.